Horizon TV, the beacon for the nation. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amani juu yako mtazamaji. Wanakwetu wanatambua kama Mariam Mwacharo. Unatizama The Sobah Show. Naam bismillahir rahmanir rahim assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh mpenzi mtazamaji shukran sana kwa kuweza kutenga muda kuweza kutegea kurunzi ya taifa Horizon TV na kama hapo awali nilivyoweza kukumbushwa ni kwamba msafiri ni aliye bandarini ama pwani na sasa hivi meli yetu ya sabahsho ishangoa nanga ukiwa nami na hodha wako Maria Mwacharo ungana nami kuanzia sasa hadi hapo baadaye saa 4 ndio itakapokuwa tamati katika kipindi cha leo the sabahsho hapo baadaye tutaweza kuangazia swala zima la kansa ya uh, breast cancer ama kansa ya kifu kwa wanawake na vile vile kwa wanaume manake as it stands statistics 47000 cases of cancer are reported every day here in the country in Kenya and we always have 32 thousand deaths every year ikiwa leo ni tarehe 7 mwezi wa Novemba mwaka 2019 sambamba na tarehe kumi rabiul awal katika kalenda yetu ya Kiislamu mwaka 1441 mtazamaji unaungana nami katika kitengo chetu cha kwanza cha sabahsho nikiwa naungana nao e, wachanganuzi wa masuala yetu ya kisiasa kama kawaida studio ni kwetu katika kipindi cha kwanza wanaungana naye leo niko naye Abubakar Mushiri pamoja na Patrick Nzomo karibuni sana katika studio zetu na mtazamaji moja kwa moja nitakuwa naungana nao katika kitengo hiki hadi hapo mwendo wa saa tatu asubuhi Karibuni sana. Shukrani Tazamaji kumbuka tunakupeperushia kipindi hiki moja kwa moja kutoka katikati mwa jiji la Nairobi, jengo la jamii afisi za Horizon TV. Ungana nasi katika kurasa zetu za mitandao at Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pale Horizon TV Kenya ama sema nami moja kwa moja pale katika Facebook yangu Mariam Kasim. Shukran sana na endelea kutegea. Moja kwa moja tukianza. Gentlemen, karibuni sana. <laughs> I have a very interesting question for the both of you lakini hapo baadaye kuna jambo ambalo tulikuwa tunazungumza tukiwa kule nje kabla tujaungana hapa studioni. Abu Bakar, how are you? I'm good alhamdulillah. Mm. Yeah. Habari ya kunitoroka? Ah, sijakutoroka. Uli tutoroka bwana. <laughs> bwana Patrick, karibu sana. Chukani. Leo nafikiri ni mara ya kwanza mimi na wewe tunakuwa pamoja katika Aha, kipindi. Haya, okay. karibu. Moja kwa moja tukianza na gazeti la The Standard pale. Habari ilipo kipaumbele ni kwamba the president's 416 puppets. And it goes on to say is this Kenya's worst ever parliament from vetting of state officers to quality of debates, bills and house committees, lawmakers and are posturing for executive hugs. Public interest matters not. The story continues on pages 5. If I can just uh, take a look at it uh, a few paragraphs. They go to say as a result of the develop, uh, development Kenyans face the likelihood of more expensive loans. Why? On Tuesday MPs absented themselves from the house during voting on the proposed Uh, proposal by President Uhuru Kenyatta only to turn around and claim that they had not been given adequate time to lobby. Abu Bakar Mushiri, if I may start with you, do you think that our MPs are now just cheerleaders for the President Uhuru Kenyatta? I think they are, you know, and uh, it's unfortunate. One, as much as there is a handshake and such kind of things, it does not, it shouldn't, you know, infringe your independence of thoughts, you know, on certain issues that are affecting the country. Mm -hmm. For example, like, uh, the debt limits you know they have raised the debt limits from 6 trillion to 9 trillion which is very unfortunate but i see it as a problem with the system because uh, as i was saying yesterday that we have in kenya a system in which the president and his mp's you know they are all under one line and you know the leader if it's the leader of the government or the leader of the opposition whatever he says whichever the the sense is is in it you know everyone will follow if baba says this everyone in his coalition follows to that direction you know that psychophancy politics which is affecting it's it's affecting uh, us as citizens generally mm -hmm. but you know i see it as a fault again with the election system electioneering system in our country if we am um, for the opinion that if we had a parliamentary system in which you know that we had less focus on uh, the presidential elections and we had the, parli uh, the parliamentarians elect the president then we could take power to the you know to the parliament and know the president then from then on you can be able to check the executive in 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 its wrong in its wrong you know and again 
the uh, role of the opposition. You know, if it was in the olden times where we had a strong opposition, this thing couldn't have pushed through. There would be been a lot of lobbying, you know, a lot of people coming together to fight the bill, but what is happening? You know, as much as you are in a political deal, it, it shouldn't compromise, you know, your sense of thinking and your independence of thoughts. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, Buena Patrick <coughs> Nzomo, let me just uh, call your attention onto this. In September last year, I, the story goes on to say MPs failed to overturn a memorandum proposing an 8% fuel levy after the House failed to raise a quorum. This has seen Kenyans pay more fuel uh, products. And in July, MPs allowed a proposal by the President to have the Kenya National Shipping Line as a Swiss firm jointly run the second container terminus in Mombasa. And this has affected Kenyans. And there's more, and there's more, more ripple. You think they do not have, the, you know, the, 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 the eye of the better Kenya of, and the, the citizens of Kenya? Uh, you know, I was reading an article yesterday, mm -hmm. and for once I felt Moses Kuria said something I can identify with. And he was saying that um, we're in a parliament that has really failed this country. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, looking at it logically, we have a parliament that has a lot of unnecessary people. Those people are way too many for a wage bill. And yet, you know, if they were working, you know, for the better of the common monarchy, then we could justify that number. Mm -hmm. But then, like he says, it's, you know, it's people there following ideas of one person. And uh, it's very unfortunate that as a country, we've not been able to move from a uh, personal, you know, personal following to, you know, idea propagating. And mm -hmm. until we move from you know that point i don't think we are we are ripe for a parliamentary system like you suggest yeah. yeah so so what what do you propose we 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 overhaul our parliamentary system uh you know i i don't we think we can off? i don't think we can trust parliament uh as it now but um if we if we had just 10 just 10 sane parliamentarians mm -hmm. then we can you know start formulating something and this you know narrows down to the party politics you know we are following a person instead of following ideas that are going to help our people mm -hmm. okay let's move on to the daily nation and the the headline there the splash there we have what nine uh, trillion shillings debt means for you and family now, by allowing the government to raise the debt ceiling to $9 trillion, the Senate gave Treasury Cabinet Secretary Ukur Yatani the green light to put every Kenyan in debt of up to 189,218 shillings. Now, I can imagine there is a baby. We just had a baby. One of my aunties just had a baby. She was born two days back, and she already has a debt of 189,000 218 <laughs> Kenyan shillings. Uh, if I may start with you, Buena Nzomo there, what do you think about this, um, the debt, the debt uh, threshold that has been increased now by the Senate? Um, I think uh, we, are, we, we, we are trending on a very dangerous ground as a country. You know, 189,000 Kenyan shillings for every child, every person living in Kenya is just, you know, crazy. Yeah, and um, you know, if we had something to show for it, then it could be justifiable. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, we have nothing, or we have very substandard projects. Mm -hmm. You see, so uh, I think up until the moment, you know, we can show something to our citizenry. Yeah, we borrowed, you know, three trillion. Yeah, it's going to do this, it's going to do this, and we should expect, you know, to repay it because you're doing X, Y, Z, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Not borrowing money for non-sustaining projects mm -hmm. or borrowing money so that people can steal the money. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's, that's just wrong, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. if, we, if, if, I, if I'm paying 189,000 and I have better social services, I have better schools, I have better roads, I, don't, I do not have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to a road, you know, that has potholes, a school that is, has a roof that is leaking, I surely have a problem with paying 189000 You know, on this issue, first, the reason they raised the debt limit is because uh, there are loans which are due to, due to be paid in, in uh, 12 months. Mm -hmm. So they have to borrow money so as to pay. Uh, to pay other loans. So it's very unfortunate. And uh, I see it as a, as a failure first on the president. You know, he has been uh, looking for money everywhere from China and such. And the loans, the kind of loans you are acquiring, are loans which are having interest rates of more than 10%. Where else you can get loans, you know, from countries or from World Bank, IMF, other financial institutions, at a, you know, interest rate of 1% to 2%, mm -hmm. which, is, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. And again, 
we talk about implementation. You know, a lot of uh, projects have been flagged, but most of them are political based. You know, we saw last month, you know, Ruto flagging a project in uh, in Kirinyaga. The project is not ripe, you know, it, it can't push through. Now, it, this is a problem with the ministries. The ministries, when the 2010 constitution was put, you know, we say that we, ha we need a limit of uh, 22 cabinet secretaries, and the, the cabinet secretary should not be politicians, they should be technocrats. But with time, look at what happened. We started by rewarding uh, political failures, you know, from Jubilee and such, three or four, five mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cabinet secretaries who are politicians, and now look at the whole thing. All of it is full of politicians. So these people, in, in, in most cases, they do not have the capacity to act in those positions. Because an MP cannot cannot do an administrative job as a cabinet secretary should do. And the same with governors. Governors should also be administrators, not politicians. So we are seeing people who are ineffective. Mm -hmm. For example, a person's uh, area of specialization is is uh, maybe law, and the person is a cabinet secretary for environment. Those two things do not even come one mile uh, close to each other. So that's why we, have ha we are having a lot of inef uh, ineffectivity in our ministries. Mm -hmm. That's why projects are not going through. So we need to look at the, the whole thing. Who are we putting there as our leaders? Because we are trusting these people with our money. You know, we are being highly taxed. Pay is a lot of money. If you earn more than 100,000 Kenya shillings in Kenya, that percent goes yeah. to tax. Mm -hmm. So we need people who are capable to act in, in s certain capacities. Mm -hmm. Let us look at uh, our leaders so that, you know, we can have an effective uh, running smooth of the government. Say, for example, you put yourself in their shoes. Uh, Mr. Patrick Nzomo, if I may ask you, what would you think would be st the solution to, you know, uh, clearing our debt as a country? Uh, I think first, the first thing we should do is that we should put a halt to the borrowing. Yeah. And then? Uh, we raise a lot of money in taxes that can be used, you know, to service these loans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have already got it wrong. Yeah, so we have to put a drastic measure to remedy the situation. We can't say that we're going to borrow more so that we can continue servicing our loans. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that, that's just, you know, wrong in very many fronts. So for me, if I was in the shoes of the, you know, politicians, which I'm not, so I'm <laughs> this is a purely imaginative issue, let's cut on the borrowing first to start with yeah then let's be accountable for the money we already have mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. because uh, as of 2014 2015 every one of three shillings that we pay for in taxes this has nothing to do with foreign borrowing mm -hmm. is not accounted for by the state so if you are able to account for our taxes, then we should be able to service these loans. Yeah, yeah? yeah. Governmental services, we're paying for them. When mm -hmm. you go to, you know, Uduma, you go to, to pay, to even to get your clearance from help if you didn't apply for it. Yeah. You're paying some money. Where yeah. is this, all this money going, going to? to yeah. This money can be used, you know, if channeled properly, we can be able to address this issue. Abu I Bakar, if you were in their shoes, what would you do to resolve the debt in the country? You know, first, before we look at how, how forward we'll go, let us look at wh where we missed. Yes, we borrowed money. And you borrowed in certain capacities. You know, we are building SGR, expecting that it will bring such a kind of uh, amount of money. It will repay itself and bring profit to the country. But that never worked. Yeah. And then we have the money already. Some of it we, bo we have already borrowed. First, yes, let's cut the, the, f you know, the borrowing the of borrowing. loans here. Mm -hmm. But let us look at what we have already. Where is, it, where is the money going? First, this money is getting into people's pockets. Mm -hmm. You know, we have uh, projects, one trillion sh uh, uh, shillings has been, uh, uh, you know, put in, into projects which are not working. Mm -hmm. So then, look at corruption. Start going for those people who are, you know, have money in their houses, you know, stealing from people. Cases are, are, are not going anywhere when, when they are they're being taken to court, you know. Mm -hmm. So let us reclaim funds lost in corruption. And again, look at those sectors in which, you know, money has been invested, but they are not bringing much. Then invest in, you know, sectors like agriculture, things you can export and such. But what are we doing? We are looking at the development of infrastructure, roads, and, uh, you know, railways and such. But how much is it bringing to the economy? So we need to engage, you know, the loans that you have already, mm -hmm. let us engage them in productive sectors of the economy so that we can see, you know, more output. And then the taxes, I do not think we, we should tax Kenyans more than, more than we are right now. I mean, we'll be hurting, hurting Kenyans Businesses more. Businesses are already closing as it stands. Yeah. So if you are to say we want to increase the tax, then increase the tax for, you know, factories, industries and such. 
therefore then you'll have you know the common morality yeah 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 okay uh gentlemen thank you very much for your contribution remember you can join in the discussion on our social media platforms on facebook instagram and twitter at horizon tv kenya or you can chat with me directly on my facebook at mariam kasim let's take a short break we'll be right back Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amani juu yako mtazamaji. Wanakwetu wanatambua kama Mariam Mwacharo. Unatizama The Sobah Show. Messenger of Allah said, Whoever says when the morning comes, Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami dina wa bi muhammadin nabiya, meaning, I am pleased with Allah as the Lord and with Islam as a religion and with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as a prophet. Then I am the guarantor that I will take him by his hand until I put him into Jannah. atawapatiliza waja wake waja wabaya atakuja kwa adhibu kwa hivyo wao ngeona pengine wamefaulu waona hapa duniani pengine wakita wadhibia duniani watadhibia akhira ikiwa mtu ni mbaya ubaya wake mbena ye na mungu basi mwenyezi mungu atangeleweza kumwacha mpaka akhira Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amani juu yako mtazamaji. Wanakwetu wanatambua kama Mariam Mwacharo. Unatizama The Sobah Show. Thank you for staying tuned to Horizon TV, the premier Islamic TV station. You're watching the Sabah show today being Healthy Thursday. Later on, we'll be discussing everything on breast cancer, if possible. And if we have the time, remember you can join in the discussion on our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Horizon TV Kenya. Or you can chat with me directly on my Facebook at Mariam Kasim. Join in the discussion. You're watching the newspaper review with me, Mariam Mwacharu, Abu Bakar Mushiri, and uh, Mr. Patrick Nzomo. Tunaendele ya mtazamaji tukiangalia gazeti la taifa leo pale habari ilokuwa pewa kipaumbele ni kwamba mwanafunzi mjanja wa moyo mwanafunzi huyu ni nani kwanza kabla sijasoma story hii bwana Patrick nikikuuliza eh, enzi za moyo alipokuwa rais wetu unakumbuka kipi sana um, nakumbuka kwamba KBC ndo ilikuwa <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know it was the only like the TV station and the radio station you could listen to uh -huh, uh -huh. and um, I, I may not understand uh, how that has shifted the landscape, but mm -hmm. I think uh, there are lots of you know checks and balances in the media industry. Mm -hmm. Horizon is able to air, uh, you know, a, a, a news article that another uh, another media house would not because mm -hmm. of you know some strings that mm -hmm. have been pulled somewhere. <laughs> so I think when we have so many you know media houses, it brings us you know to a platform where. We can get news properly, uh -huh. yeah, and also you know the nyayo torture chambers, yeah, and uh, those are things uh, <laughs> we've, we've long moved in. Uh, but yeah. I've also seen an, a, a, a discussion that we'll be having later uh -huh. of uh, you know police still you know.
treating people in such yes, a way in their yes, cells. Yes. So then it begs the question, have we really moved on or we've just changed the way we do things? Yeah. They are no longer in our chambers, yeah. they are now in our police cells. So those yeah. are the things I Abu remember. Abu Bakar, what do you remember about Moi's regime? <laughs> what I remember about Moi's regime? To be honest, uh, I was little by then, but again, uh, I remember the Nyayo milk. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, milk. So we, we talk about the positivities and the you know the songs, the yes. the patriotic nationalistic songs yes. that were being sung. Yeah. Which were, you know, kumchota. Yeah. <laughs> which I think it was an exaggeration of the whole thing. That Nongoza Vizuri. Uh-huh. Okay. I I it was their opinion. Maybe the singers thought that he was leading well. But I remember the songs in the Nyami. So, now that you've mentioned that, uh, thinking that he is actually leading well in the songs about uh, President uh, Moi Kwambayeni Mo ni Kiongozi Mzuri, listen to this. Raisu Uru Kenyata amejitokeza kwa Kiongozi Mjanja o siyasa sawa na alivyo kuwa mlezi wake wa kisiasa, Rais Mstafu Daniel Moi, hasa katika kumaliza nguvu taasisi kuu za kuendeleza demokrasia. Ingawa anatawala katika mazingira tofauti na mzee Moi aliyehudumu chini ya katiba iliyompa nguvu na mamlaka makuu Rais Kenyatta amekuwa akitumia mbinu zinazofanana na zile alizotumia Rais huyo huyo wa pili wa Kenya kuzima upinzani na wanaokosoa serikali yake. Je, yeah, swali so langu ni kwa mfano Abubakar umesema kwamba kulikuwa na nyimbo zikimsifu ms, Rais Mstafu Daniel Toroiti Charap Moi kwamba ni kiongozi mzuri na sasa inasemekana kwamba Rais Uhuru Kenyatta yatumia mbinu hizo hizo. Ndio Mda ni tofauti, nyakati ni tofauti. Lakini ye utumia mbinu hizo hizo kama Rais Daniel Arap Moy kuweza kuongoza. You know, when the first time I, I got to know uh, His Excellency, the mm-hmm. President Huru Kenyatta, well, mm-hmm. was after he took power in 2013. Mm-hmm. And uh, to me, he seemed, and probably still is, you know, a good character. But uh, when it comes to politics, you have to be wise in what in, in you are doing so that you know you... You, you ensure that you are still on the top. Mm-hmm. But again, I will question his leadership. Mm-hmm. You know, he might, you might be, Mariam, you might be a good person, but you might not be a good leader. You might uh, have a happy face and such, but probably, you know, we have weaknesses in certain extent. Yeah. So I wouldn't praise much the leadership of his excellency, the president, especially now, you know, that we are going into an economic turmoil and such kind of things. Mm-hmm. I will talk about, yes, you used whatever you used, uh, political you know, wisdom and such to get where where you are, but what have you done when you got whatever you want? You know, if you are talking about a period of revolution, that you are talking about 10 years of, you know, economic turnover, you know, mm-hmm. that you are experiencing a lot of development and such, mm-hmm. I will be praising him. But to be honest, I used to be a uh, supporter of the fo- uh, of the president, Huru Kenyatta, but I'm no longer, um, I am no longer his supporter. His supporter. Because, yeah, because I've, I've seen what... Uh, you know what his leadership has brought to the to the table mm-hmm. and i'm not pleased with it to be honest mm-hmm. so i prefer you know that the legacy he used to talk about you know was left you know when i talk about moiki baki talk about thicker road the person brought a lot of development in the country yeah. so i will prefer development more than to whatever you achieved individually you know as a person okay. yeah. do you share his sentiments mr nzomo <laughs> uh just speaking on the positives now on mm-hmm. this uh on this uh i think um Kenya has seen a lot of growth, you know, from Moi's time, you know, in terms of uh, the freedom of expression. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's in this era that you can tag the president or anyone in the ministry, you know, start an hashtag, mm-hmm. you know, that is completely, you know, not not abusing them per se, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. completely saying the truth as, as it is and uh, there are no repercussions per se, as, as, you'd, uh, as you'd say. So I think... Uh, you know, in terms of the freedom of expression, and of course I share his sentiments on the economy. Mm-hmm. I, I think we, f- we, we live in, in a very bad, like we just said, 189,000, and uh, you know, like as of, as of you know, a, a few days ago it was 124, yes. like uh, we were discussing the yes. in the before we came here. Yeah. So I think we're getting it wrong, yeah? Mm-hmm. But in some aspects I think we're doing, we're doing just fine. We don't have the New Torture Chambers anymore, or we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know if they're there. Yeah. But uh, I, I feel we, we've grown, we've grown in terms of uh, achieving the Bill of Rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
substantially, mm -hmm. but you know these are things we need to we, we need also to focus on economic growth that is going to help everyone else, you know, not just people on Twitter. Mm -hmm. There are people who are not on Twitter, there are people <laughs> who are not on Facebook, yes, yeah, yeah, who are starving out there. Yes. You know, when you speak about matters economy, yes. then we are feeling the pitch. You know, in times of Moi, uh, the dollar used to trade at 25 yes yeah mm -hmm. we are you know trying to hit 110 right now yes so where are we getting it wrong yeah mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. and uh, on that same uh, matter if i may ask you about uh the, the you know during moi's time hapa imesema kwamba moi alileta vyama vyote kwa chama kimoja na the whole country ilikuwa under one party na hivi sasa eh, uhuru kenyata rais uhuru kenyata ametumia mbinu hiyo hiyo kuweza kuunganisha the opposition and uh, the the leading you know party do you think that that has some benefit to the citizens of the country? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, when you look at it superficially, you could, uh, you could say that, uh, you know, we're building bridges and uh, we're trying to achieve social harmony and cohesion, mm -hmm. which is a good thing, mm -hmm. yeah, superficially. Yeah. But then when you look deeply into it, this is Kwa always a personal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's always a personal agenda that is being driven using a name mm -hmm. that is, you know, fancy, made to look fancy, made to look more social appealing. Mm -hmm. But it's always a personal idea. Mm -hmm. And like I always say, you know, up until the moment we change politics, you know, from personal agenda mm -hmm. to something that you know is sustaining something that lives beyond the person mm -hmm. then we'll be able you know to live to live in a country you know that appreciates everyone and uh, that you know is mindful of the wanjiku i'm, I'm about that person okay yeah. Abu Bakar, <laughs> yeah, nikikuuliza very quickly katika huko kuunganisha ni eh, kulingana na hii habari iliweza kuangaziwa katika gazeti la taifa leo inasema kwamba Rais Uhuru Kenyatta amefanikiwa kuzima ule moto wa the opposition side kwamba sasa hawawezi kukashifu serikali yake kwa sababu sasa wameungana pamoja na wanaleta maendeleo nchini. Unakubali? You know, he has done well on bringing the opposition to his side, but again I see it I see, I see it as a pulling one side to you. Mm -hmm. then creating the division on the other side because right now it's like you have uh, Uhuru Raila on the other side you have Ruto s trying to get someone for 2022 mm -hmm. so you have created harmony on one side but the other side you know it's, it's still on division mm -hmm. and again we look at the role of opposition opposition is very essential in a country as much as they may disturb you as a government as much as they may give you sleepless night you know they they, they help the common monarchy because they they criticize you they correct you you know on matters where, where you are going wrong and it creates that sense of competition you know when you have a company which mm -hmm. has no competition a monopolistic company it has no incentive you know to build its services and such because there is no competition yeah. and so it is with the government mm -hmm. so if the government there is that opposition you know they in their failings they know that these people will take advantage, so the government ups its game. So that is what we are not having right now. Haya pengine kama nitaeza kuchukua the attention of wananchi huko nje ni kwamba pale katika ukurasa wane gazeti la taifaleo inasema kwamba habari giandae kwa mvuwa kubwa mwezi huu idara ya onya. Na nilika kusema kwamba idara ya kitaifa kusu utabiri wa hali ya anga KMD imiota adharisha wa Kenya kujianda kwa mvua kubwa zaidi mwezi huu ikilinganishwa na mwezi uliopita huku vipindi vya mvua vikiendelea uh, katika sehemu kadha nchini na mkurugenzi Bistela alionya kuwa mvua hiyo huenda ikasababisha mafuriko na maporomoko katika maeneo yanayoathiriwa kawaida Kenya kwa hiyo tahadhari uko nje mwananchi wapo unaishi katika sehemu ambapo kuna momonyoko wa udongo basi mvua zinatarajiwa kuwa nyingi mwezi huu ikilinganishwa na vipindi vyo vyote vile nchini tukiendelea na ukurasa wa kumi pana habari pale sera zibuniwe kuadhibu wanaotumia mitandao vibaya na majuzi alikuwa rais wa Marekani Barack Obama alikashifu kizazi cha leo kinachotumia vibaya mitandao ya kijamii kudhalilisha na kuwavuta wengine chini kwa kutoa shutuma kiholela ili tu kuonekana kuwa wamepevuka na wametoa baadhi ya, ya E, baadhi ya examples pale wamesema kwamba e, e, kuna hatuwezi ku, ku, kusahau kwamba kuna kipindi uh, rais Daniel Moi na Mwai Kibaki aliweza kuuliwa na wananchi wa Kenya kwamba wana tweet kwamba wamefariki wamefariki na kumbe wako hai na pia kuna vile vile baadhi ya mitandao wanasema wahasiriwa wamejitoa uhai kutokana na kuathiriwa kisaikolojia baadhi ya watu wanaweza ku attack other people online and uh, this can cause psychological trauma and other people have actually committed suicide from you know cyberbullying so wanasema sera zitolewe so that they can you know uh, deal with the people who actually uh, propagate cyberbullying and uh, post you know information that is not right what do you think uh, about that bwana patrick if i may start with you uh, i think um, to start with 
we we have article 33 of our constitution mm -hmm. that you know addresses the issue of the freedom of expression mm -hmm. it's very important that we are living in a country where people are able to express what they feel what they think and the information they have and ideas on other people mm -hmm. but then when you look at article 33 clause 3 you know, it goes ahead and provides a responsibility. You cannot enjoy a right without a responsibility. Definitely. In enjoying your freedom of expression, I'm supposed to be mindful, you know, of uh, the reputation and the rights of other people. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not supposed to say that, you know, my friend here is dead. Yes. When, when in real sense, I know he's, he's, he's not dead. Mm -hmm. I've not verified the information. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was sick. Yeah, you know, instead of saying, uh, quick recovery, I'm busy, you know, posting something on mm -hmm. social media, mm -hmm. you know, that they have passed on, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. been irresponsible, and I think we already have the laws. Uh, it's just recently and uh, more celebrated, we had the uh, Computer Misuse and Cyber Crimes Act. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we already have the, and like they always say, we already have everything that we need to counter our social problems, yeah. The problem is, are they being utilized, mm -hmm. yeah. When you cyber bullet, for example, by a person, are you willing to go and report, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. What had you done to deserve the cyberbullying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mm -hmm. see, these are things, these are discussions we need to have to tell people that there are platforms out there for them, you know, to report these things mm -hmm. because some of them don't know. For mm -hmm. example, you cyberbullied on, you know, Facebook, on Twitter, you know, on Instagram, on WhatsApp, your pictures are rotating all over the place, but you don't know the avenue that you can take, yes. you know, to, to report this issue. So yeah, so I think it's, it's really important that we capacity build our people mm -hmm. so that they know and appreciate that in as much as people are supposed to speak they should not speak ill of us and when they do we have this platform mm, Abu Bakar Mushiri if I may ask you for example somebody out there posts that you know Abu Bakar Mushiri uh, passed on this morning rest in peace and it's not true what measures do you think should be taken in order to address this as an issue you know first if such an instance was to happen then you you go down to the individual you know why would you pass false information and again uh, when I look at the issue of uh, social media, you know, I'm mesmerized by the power of Kenyans in memes. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, attacking another country. I mean, Kenya is a funny country, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, Kenyans are funny. Mm -hmm. But again, we talk about uh, people who have committed suicide from such instances. You should realize that social media is a social platform. Yeah. A place whereby, you know, you are, you are subject to other people's comments, even outside here, you know. You are subject to other people's comments and such. So when you're going out there to put your information, kind of limit your information, your mm -hmm. personal information, because, mm -hmm. you know, people get too much, you know, about your information. Some might take advantage. People are there for different intentions, you yes. know, on social media platforms. Mm -hmm. So limit yourself. Before we talk about what the policies and the laws can do, mm -hmm. first limit the amount of information you put there and, you know, your kind of interactions with the strangers. Yeah. Such kind of things. You shouldn't be meeting with someone you met on Facebook, you know, after one week or s such kind of things. Yeah. So that th those are some of the issues that we should uh, act upon on individual capacity. And address. You know, talking about uh, laws and uh, policies, then it's all about implementation. Because people are not Africans, you know, they are, we are not willing to talk about things that happen, mm -hmm. that happen, you know, to us and mm -hmm. such kind of things. Mm -hmm. If you are psychologically, you know, traumatized by by social media then mm -hmm. the first step you should do is withdraw from it you know then seek uh, seek uh, you know psychological counseling attention from someone else yeah. then the person who was involved or the people who are involved in whatever mischief they were involved in then if you can get access to them report the case then it will be acted upon yeah. so it's all about everything has, and yeah, awareness yeah, and everything has its advantages and its advantages social media is very positive people are making a living out of it you know marketing and such but again these are it's the also demerits deteriorating that others yeah. so you implementation of the laws and also be aware mtazamaji uh, shukran sana remember you can join in our discussion on our social media platforms on facebook instagram and twitter at horizon tv kenya or chat with me directly on my facebook at mariam kasim see you in a short while Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amani juu yako mtazamaji. Wanakwetu wanatambua kama Mariam Wacharo. Unatizama The Sobah Show.
Mwenyezi Mungu atawapatiliza waja wake. Waja wabaya atakuja kuadhibu. Kwa hivyo wao ungeona pengine wamefaulu waona hapa duniani pengine wakitawadhibia duniani wataadhibiwa khaira. Ikiwa mtu ni mbaya ubaya wake mbena yeye na Mungu basi Mwenyezi Mungu ataangaleweza kumwacha mpaka akhera. Kuna faida gani twapata tukimjua Mtume sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Nabii mwenye ushawishi mkubwa duniani. Tukizikwa tukitiwa kaburini tutaulizwa haya maswali matatu. Man rabbuk ma dinu man nabiyuk. Sheikh Jamaluddin anakupa simulizi. Uwezi kumpenda mtu simjua na kutambua sunna zake. Lakini ukimjua na ukimtambua Mtume Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mapenzi yako yatazidi. Ufahamu Rasulullah familia na maswahaba wake. Tazama sira ya Mtume kila Jumatatu saa moja jioni kwenye Horizon TV. Horizon TV the beacon for the nation Bismillahirrahmanirrahim amani juu yako mtazamaji wanakwetu wanatambua kama Mariam Wacharo unatizama the sobah show Na mtazamaji shukrani sana kwa kuendelea kutegea kurunzi ya taifa Horizon TV unaungana nasi katika kitengo cha lala salama cha uchambuzi wa magazeti tuendelee pale katika gazeti la The Star on page 7 We have a story there youth unprepared for first job university report shows now despite literacy levels reaching all time high many employers are finding graduates unprepared and struggle to adapt to basic entry level jobs and it goes on to explain how 9355 interviews were conducted in 24 counties out of which 6362 are employed youth and 2300 employers in both sectors employers are complaining that the youth that come up from university are actually unprepared for entry level jobs and we know we have um uh, training we usually have internships in the course for our all courses that we take but most of the complaints that usually come back to the school is that hey i am taking journalism mass communication maybe a uh, communication and pr but when i go for my internship i am actually taken on a, a tea you know tea job you know you make tea for the whole for the whole company or maybe you're doing graphics or camera and then you go and start making tea do you think maybe this is the problem abubakar mushiri if i may start with you or rather how best should we prepare our youth for the entry level jobs do you think maybe serikali ama the the ministry of education should put forth measures that maybe should make sure that the training in universities is important and it's actually uh, the best in order to prepare our youth for entry level jobs you know i would see this problem from two ways one about uh, our curriculum you know if for example one is study, uh, studying uh, engineering there's a lot of theories in it or else it's supposed to be a practical job you understand so people are in class in class in class but going to the field is very little and again the second part of it is when you have the chance to go to the field then uh, especially in in government institutions mm-hmm. county government you go for internship then you'll be a messenger you know even if you are studying economics so you'll be a messenger being sent to get me a cup of tea or such. so the society itself you know is a uh, limiting limiting the youth you know when it comes to internships attachments and such so uh, the cbc there is a new curriculum maybe it will address such kind of issues mm-hmm. and again people out there if you know you have an intern and a attache somewhere then give him some uh, a job or you know roles skills that in, in which he can learn mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Uh, Bwana Patrick if I may ask you do you think the uh, education ministry should put forth measures to actually make sure that our youth that come out of universities are prepared for the entry level jobs uh, first i think this is a very personal uh, issue uh, because when you look at uh, what they are speaking about there and the problem you're having with the young people is not 
whether they can do their job mm -hmm. that they can do because you know they have learned mm -hmm. and uh, we, we may need to address the theological uh, the theoretical part of it and you know making it more practical but the it narrows down you know to a personal very personal decisions we are dealing with punctuality you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. courtesy at the job at the job at the job market these are soft skills mm -hmm. these are not things you learn in school mm -hmm. these are things you learn you, you know in your normal interaction with people so I feel We've moved from, you know, the point where we focus so much on papers, we are moving to the soft skills because the jobs are not, uh, you know, adequate for everyone. Mm -hmm. So what's going to make you, you know, be standing out there is you get that job, you have the soft skills, and then your character is going to maintain you there and, you know, build you up. So I think it's a very personal so you see, most universities, people say they usually give the theoretical part of uh, education. Now, do you think maybe after university we should now join TVET so that they can prepare <laughs> us for, you know, skills for employment? Mr. Patrick? Uh, I think uh, it's, it's very important that we address the practical aspect because you're not going to you know, be doing theory in the field. For example, if you're an engineer, like he says, mm -hmm. you're going to be building a house and not, you know, drawing structures. Drawing mm -hmm. structures is very important, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you need to understand steel will go with this. You know, I need to put this metal here for it to be sustainable. Yeah. We need to understand those things. And that's where internships come come come, come, come into play. Mm -hmm. Are we making good use of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you're supposed to. I learned this in first year, in second year. I have my internship in third year. Yeah. When I go there, am I able, you know, to come back in fourth year and appreciate, you know, some bit of a practical aspect yeah. of what happens? You know, and again, it's all about that personalization. You know, as much as the structures are not there for you to be effective, for you to learn in the field, yeah. then make a personal effort. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of uh, when you have a holiday, get something to do, you know, instead of uh, s watching movies and series, get, <laughs> so get something to do. Netflix get something to do, you know, that you can learn, you know, and the soft skills. Mm -hmm. We have seminars, you have workshops e yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Go there, learn. And again, it's all about the field, the field, the field. Because you notice that polytechnics, you know, diploma students in engineering and such, they are getting jobs quickly because, you know, they are more, more they have more skills. Yeah. So it's all about that personal decision. The system might not favor you, but go out and, you know, take that step, that extra step, because the yeah. job market is not... Is, is not favorable, you know, currently. Yeah, in the and time waits for no one. Let's take a look at page 12 of the Star. Project gives Mero Street children new lease of life. Now, have you ever imagined living in the streets, begging for food from well-wishers and even spending the night out in the cold? Well, this is part of the parcel of the life of street children in Meru Town, some young one year old after being born in the streets. And it goes on, the story uh, goes on to explain how street children are living and that the program now has started to, you know, give food and also training uh, according to talent. And I remember something like this was happening in Nairobi County, how, where it went and how it went. We have no idea. We've never had any news on this. But if I may ask you, Bubakar Mushiri, very quickly, how can we be, how can, what measures should we put forth in order for us to, you know, have our street children uh, incorporated back into the systems, you know, education, trained maybe on talent, so that they can be people in the society? You know, these are very social issue. And again, you look at how the street children come along. You know, it's all social problems. Sometimes it's cause of families and such. So we need to reevaluate, you know, our society. Our society has become less integrated, you know. It has become less of a community and more individualistic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if uh, your, neighbor's, your neighbor's child is facing a problem, you might not, you, you know, you are, you, are, you are not helping. So that's the, the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. The second part of it, you know, is uh, it's all about individual effort. Because the county government or the government can do something about this. But, you know, if uh, people are to come, you know, have an NGO that is doing a lot on, on such kind of things like we have seen in Meru. Yeah. You know, they are coming out, reaching to them, mm -hmm. engaging them in useful activities like sports, you know. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. reduces the, you know, their indulgence in drugs and uh, in crime yeah. and such. Yeah. And, you know, give, you know, be able to give to, to help these people on an individual capacity. Mm -hmm. It's not all about who is there, it's all about you as an individual, what you can do to help yeah, on, on your own capacity. Yeah, Mr. Patrick, if we take a look at uh, just Nairobi County, we walk in the streets and we meet these uh, street children. Some of them are very old, or rather old young ones, yeah, if I can say that they're youth between 16 to 20 to 23 year old. These are people who can actually contribute to the economy as we are now complaining. These are people who have great potential. What do you think we should do to, in order to help them so that they can help in building the country? Uh, you know, they say that um, 
why we despise poor people is because they remind us of how we would look like yeah. without our nice clothes and uh, you know that nice cologne. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, this is a very collective, collective, you know, kind of a job, yeah? Because uh, look at it, like he says, is its roots, yeah? It's the social order, you know, in the family and all that. Yeah. But you also need to appreciate that uh, these are very special category of of, of, of children, mm -hmm, yeah? Mm -hmm. Children in their very nature are very vulnerable. Yeah. But by the virtue that these ones are in the streets makes them more vulnerable, mm -hmm. which makes the state, you know, more responsible for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the children act as mechanisms. Yeah, it gives the, the these children to the state. They are at the care of the state, yeah? But again, I believe we should not leave it to the state because again, our resources are not, you know, so much, you know, that there, yeah? yeah? But there are people who are doing something for the street children. That's one example. Yes. The Muli children's family, you know, does all this, takes them to school, yeah? The Mother Teresa sisters and fathers, they are doing this. The problem is, what are you doing out there? Mm -hmm. You know, and like I said, it's a very collective kind of a job that we need to do as citizens of this country. Yeah, all collectively. Okay, let's take a look at the Daily Nation, page 12. We have Kilifi, Naro, Koma Bay, lead in teen mothers. Now, and at the top there, we have provide family planning services to teenagers, top researcher tells state. Uh, if we go on to, uh, to just uh, read a little bit on the story, Kilifi, Narok and Homa Bay counties have the highest number of teen pregnancies or other pregnancy cases in the country, a conference was told. Yesterday, the situation has been blamed on inadequate access to information on reproductive health. Now, right now, there are so many non-governmental organizations, you know, CBOs that are actually aiming at the youth to speak about, you know, reproductive health and uh, sex education, which is actually usually a taboo in most societies to speak about. We have the very long holiday. The other day, I was calling some of my siblings and they closed school from early, uh, late October, early November, and they, they're going back to school, you know, in January. These people are just dormant. They have nothing to do. They are going places. What measures should we put forth in order for them to actually live healthy lives? Because when you have nothing to do, then you, you know, the research says you derogatory, you know, you have this derogatory thinking and you, you're likely to delve into um, behaviors that aren't acceptable. So now we have teens out there, long holiday. Abu Bakr, what would you do? You know, first I was seeing a sheikh addressing the issue and he was saying, you know, when you're idol, it's when, you know, shaitan comes to you and there are people out there, drug dealers who want to, you know, come to you, look at the market. Yeah. People who have the intention of destroying people's, uh, young people's lives, you know, they, they are targeting the people right now, they are dormant, the children are dormant. So the parents should engage their children more, you know, if possible, take, take, take them somewhere they can learn, you know, if it's a religious, uh, a religious uh, workshop or something or you know soft skills institution you can do computer computer packages such kind of things you mm. know at least one will be busy and uh less indulgence in in in, in such in which are activities which are not helpful yeah. and again you look at kilifi and uh some of these issues the highest uh, issues that uh, lead to teenage pregnancy in, in the coast are these disco matangas yeah so the parents then should keep their children from attending such kind of things mm -hmm. because if you know this is the cause in our area of bringing teenage pregnancies, then limit the, your, your children and, uh, you know, do a lot of parenting. You know, parenting is very important mm -hmm. to ensure that they are, they are not involved in, in such kind of issues. And the researcher telling, telling the state that they should allow, uh, allow family planning, start a family planning program for teenagers, yeah. I think that would only encourage them more. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't help first address the kind of, you know, the teenage pregnancies and such limit reduce them but when you tell them you know to use family planning i think you will encourage them uh, to indulge in se sexual activities mr patrick early. do you share his sentiments that if we start now encouraging youth into family planning then that's just encouraging the behavior i think i totally agree with him and uh, our country is also in one of the big international forums that is discussing you know matters sexual reproductive health and rights mm -hmm. uh, at the kicc you know from the 11th to 14th the nairobi mm -hmm. summit mm -hmm. of the international conference on population and development but you know the problem has been uh, africans we are always shy 
we always shy from this discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And the problem has been sexual education has been kept at the bare minimum. Yeah. Yeah? Like, yeah. for example, will my mom, will my dad sit me down and we have a discussion around these things? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The West is doing that. And that's why that would be a very good uh, platform mm -hmm. for them. That would be a good headline for the West and not for for, for an African state, because you're not having this discussion. You can't just, you know, pump things into people. They do not appreciate, you know, why are you giving me family planning, for example? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, the figures you're speaking about there are 13 to 18 years, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, I must say that I'm, I'm a Catholic and uh, we have a very strong stand, you know, against uh, family planning and all contraceptives. Mm -hmm. So for me, it would be, you know, the wrong turn. Because you're telling our young people, what are we saying about the next generation to come? Yeah. We are saying that, you know, it's okay to do everything that you want, mm -hmm. which is not. Yeah. So we need to train our young people. Mm -hmm. Parents need to start having this conversation at a very domestic level with their children mm -hmm. because they are getting out into a society that is already very influenced. Yeah. So we need to agree with our, with our children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There is one, two, three out there. Yeah. I'm telling you, go do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for those comments, uh, gentlemen. I'm being informed that we are out of time. Asante ni sana kwa kweza uh, kuja katika the newspaper review today, mtazamaji. Tunachukua mapumzi kwa mafupi, lakini na kusihi wewe usiende mbali. Hapo baadae teza kuunga na tena, pamoja na Dr. Eric Hungu, tukizungumzia breast cancer. Kwa hiyo tuonane hapo baadae mda usokuwa mrefu. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Amani juu yako mtazamaji. Wanakuitu wanantambua kama Maria Mwacharo. Unatizama the soba show. Mungu atawapatiliza waja wake. Waja wabaya atakuja kwa adhibu.